welcome back to our quarterly security event trends video series. Throughout this video, we'll discuss security events we've been watching, from war and terrorism to crime and civil unrest. My name is Tobias Wellner, I'm a senior analyst for Control Risks. Alison Wood joined me from Cirrus, our strategic partner. Together, our companies provide the only augmented analytics solution for risk and threat professionals bringing together advanced analysis and artificial intelligence. Thanks, Toby. As head of intelligence at Cirrist, I'm responsible for the analytical content on the platform, as well as the collection of open sources that we bring into Cirrist. I'm looking forward to providing all of you with highlights from our quarterly report on verified events and an outlook for the quarter ahead. So this time around, Toby, I thought we could look at our top five observations from our report this quarter. And if we start out with one of them, I think that really has to be uh, conflicts, right? So one of the key features of the security environment this year was conflict flashpoints across the globe. And while Russia and Ukraine really dominated the first half of the year, in the second half, we saw a couple of simmering conflicts, such as in Myanmar and in Syria, increase in intensity. And we saw a couple of new ones, such as Sudan and Israel and Palestinian territories emerge over the course of the year. And for many of our clients, I think the result of these sort of series of conflicts emerging throughout the year, but also just kind of simmering in an ongoing way is sort of conflict and crisis fatigue within security and intelligence teams. Yeah, that's right, Alison. And I think in addition to that sort of crisis fatigue, we've also really noticed that for many of our clients, um, these flash points, these regional conflicts meant that global supply chain resilience is really back on uh, businesses' radars. Um, we've heard from many of our clients that, you know, they're particularly worried and concerned about, you know, how these local conflicts can quickly spiral out and impact um, supply chains globally and also, of course, the global economy. And examples here are, you know, the recent attacks on shipping in the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden. Um, you know, the lower passages through the Panama Canal as a result of um, the global um, climate crisis. Um, and then also, you know, we'll see that the anniversary of the anniversary of the Ukraine invasion in February now will bring sort of increased global tensions to the shore again between Russia and the West. Uh, and that will come in a form of sanctions um, that will mean sort of that will mean further economic decoupling. Uh, with ramifications again for global supply chains. Our second trend from the report is very closely related to the first, but I do think is deserving of its own. And this is the conflict between Israel and Hamas, which started the first week of the fourth quarter of, of 2023, October 7th, of course, and really dominated both our data for verified events, particularly war events, and our analytical output for the remainder of that quarter. And if we look here, we can see some of the verified event data that the team has gathered since the outbreak of the conflict. Um, so if we look at events in Israel, the Palestinian territories and Lebanon, since there was quite a bit of conflict on the border, um, and we look at here, I've set the date range starting since uh, October 7th, in the beginning of that conflict. Um, and here we can see some of the trends that we've seen, particularly across war and terrorism, have really dominated that data uh, in recent months. And while the localized intensity of the conflict has declined um, over the last month or so, regional tensions and associated hostilities remain a concern with recent flashpoints in Iraq, Jordan and Yemen. And certainly this is a conflict that I know many of our clients continue to watch quite closely for that reason. Alison, one thing that this conflict has also done is refocused security teams on global terrorism trends. Um, Islamic State and Al-Qaeda have both called for attacks against Western uh, targets in response to the Israel-Hamas conflict. Um, you know, what we've seen over the last couple of years that actually you know, attacks by jihadist organizations um, have decreased significantly, also their capabilities have decreased. But now with this conflict, there's certainly increased intent by these groups to carry out attacks. And that will stay, that will be here for the long term. This won't go away with the ceasefire in, in the Middle East. And also interestingly, we saw that the Islamic State actually in its propaganda call urging um, uh, its members to carry out attacks actually said, hey, 
um, to you supporters of Hamas and other Palestinian um, members join the Islamic State um, because Hamas, your group, uh, supports Iran, which is, you know, a declared um, enemy of the Islamic State. So you can see that, you know, this, this conflict in the Middle East has really brought a lot more complexity to the global uh, terrorism landscape. And for our fourth uh, feature, I think we're going to move away from the Middle East and towards Latin America. And here in this region, organized criminal groups have long been a feature of the security environment. But we saw a steady increase in events perpetrated by these groups throughout 2023. Um, if we look at the number of events uh, last year in 2023 compared to the year before, we saw a 66% increase in events perpetrated by organized criminal groups. We've seen particularly notable increases in Brazil, Peru, Ecuador, and Mexico, uh, and certainly expect the improved capabilities of these groups in many countries in Latin America to continue to add complexity to the region's security environment in 2024. I think it's worth noting that there are a number of countries in the region that are also uh, undergoing important elections this year, which is something we'll talk about in just a few minutes. Right. And the last uh, trend we want to highlight here is um, unrest related to environmental issues. Um, we've really picked up an increase of these incidents. Um, between 2022 and 2023, we've seen an increase of 121% um, of unrest incidents in relation to environmental issues. We also saw a rise in recent years of incidents of activism uh, that have escalated into and evolved to uh, extremism and um, criminal tactics um, and these groups using more criminal tactics. And that's certainly a trend that we are forecasting to continue in 2024. And also certainly connected with the fact that, you know, the climate crisis will be coming increasingly visible environmental activism um, will sort of escalate alongside that with certainly ramifications to companies and you know rounding up um, this point here with an example in Germany one of the most important activist groups recently not announced a strategy change um, away from blocking roads towards more targeting of politicians and company and um, that's our top five. So if we've just gone through some of the top trends that we've seen in the past quarter and over the course of 2023, let's look forward to 2024. Uh, and Toby, I know this is something that your team has been looking at very closely, and this is sort of the year of elections, right? Um, and we've long had the elections monitor as a feature of Cirrust, um, but I'm excited to talk about how we're extending the time period of uh, the elections monitor, as well as adding other potentially disruptive events to a calendars that our clients can use to stay one step ahead. So you can see sort of these future events here um, that are appearing in the calendar. And then you'll also be able to see these um, by a particular country and laid out in the calendar view as well. So certainly this is something that I think is exciting um, in terms of many security teams to be able to plan uh, for upcoming events. That's right, Alison. And I wanted to sort of add to here um, to explain to the viewers, you know, the, the way that um, my colleagues and I are, are using um, the election monitor feature also to track elections. We'll see, especially this year, middle powers, um, Indonesia, India, South Africa, Mexico. These countries will all have elections this year. And while we don't anticipate really significant surprises in all of these countries, really, when it comes to the elections, you know, there will be a focus on the growing influence of these countries on a geopolitical stage. All of these countries will seek to increase their influence via their resources, be it mediating conflict, um, arms sales and opposing sort of the superpowers, uh, the US and China, as they continue to compete on an international stage. Thanks so much, Toby. I know that I and many of our clients will be watching these events very closely over the next couple of months. For more information about some of the trends that we discussed today, please do look at Cirrus Verified Security Event Report for last quarter, um, which is available on our website. Thank you for watching, everyone. We hope you enjoyed our latest video in our Security Events Trend Series. Please get in touch if you want to find out more about how our strategic partnership can help your organization.